Hello, my name is Tom Harrod from the Himmelfarb Health Sciences Library, and the topic I'll be covering today is the research life cycle. This video is part of the Himmelfarb Library's Scholarly Communications video series. Here is a brief outline of what I'm going to cover. First, I'd like to cover what the research life cycle is, then I'll go through a typical representation of the life cycle, stage by stage, and discuss some of the most important things to consider at each of those stages. Here is a typical representation of the research life cycle, though there are many other versions of this with slight differences. However, the overall concepts are fairly similar across different models. The purpose of these diagrams is to describe the common activities which compose the research enterprise, showing the step-by-step -step process by which someone starts with an idea and ends with the dissemination of their results. Additionally, the way it's represented graphically indicates the cyclical nature of research. That is, the successful completion of a cycle, finishing with the successful dissemination of published results, isn't the end of the story. Instead, one set of conclusions will usually suggest a whole new set of questions. This shows science as an ongoing conversation with individual researchers continuously coming and going, but always the conversation advances. The first stage in the life cycle is the generation of ideas. This means identifying a topic of study, perhaps as a continuation of one's own prior research and or through reviewing the existing literature and identifying a gap. To that end, many authors will identify potential next steps in the discussion sections of their published articles, which they intend to prompt future research that will continue the work they've done. This step may also mean identifying a team of collaborators with whom one might perform the research, perhaps even identifying individuals at different institutions with unique expertise and experience on a particular topic. Given the resource-intensive nature of research, it will most likely be necessary to procure funding. This will involve the identification of funding, for example, government agencies or private organizations which fund research. Funding organizations will typically tailor their grants around specific areas of interest, so you'll need to identify opportunities which match your proposed topic. There are numerous online resources for identifying these opportunities, like grants.gov, etc. Next, you'll need to apply for the funding. This means the creation of a proposal to the funding agency in which you describe why you are uniquely qualified to be the recipient of their funds. Next comes the performance of the research. This part is pretty self-explanatory. However, given relatively new data management initiatives, you'll likely be expected to make your raw data available for other researchers. These initiatives have been developed both by the funding agencies themselves as well as by different journal publishers, so make sure your data is well protected and described to maximize its utility for other researchers. After that comes the analysis of the results. Again, remember what was just said regarding the importance of data management practices. Also, this step may require the use of advanced data analysis and visualization software. Many of the most common data analysis programs, like SAS and SPSS, are available on computers at the Himmelfarb Library. Dissemination often refers to the preparation of a manuscript for eventual publication as an article in a scholarly journal. However, this may also mean the submission of one's work for display at a conference in the form of a research poster or a brief talk. During this presentation, we've reviewed a typical research life cycle. We've also looked at some of the specific points of consideration at each of the various stages in the research life cycle. Thank you for your time and interest in this topic. If you have any further questions on this topic, please feel free to email me at tph at gwu.edu. Here are some links to resources that were mentioned in this video.